thanks for joining me. In celebration of Shark Week, I wanted to do a little bit of a shark themed topper. Now, a lot of times people will do this out of gum paste or fondant or just a solid piece of chocolate or do it in Rice Krispies and cover it in fondant. I actually am making what you would think is a giant cake pop because it's actually filled with cake. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Um, this is a mold that we have at Sweetwise. The mold number is N46. And it's just kind of a cute cartoon shark. So what I'm gonna do first is just coat this with white chocolate. And you can see all from the details in the front, um, you wanna make sure of the deeper cavities like the eye and the, these side fins that um, you're getting chocolate in there as well, making sure there's no air bubbles trapped so it comes out nicely. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I like to use these little silicone muffin cups. This is basically a, a, like a six count muffin pan, like a silicone muffin pan. And I just cut it into pieces so that I can put my chocolate in there and melt a little bit at a time. And what I like about that is that when there's some left in the container and it dries, I can use all of what's left over. There's no waste in that. So I just melt this in the microwave and I'm gonna put a little bit in the deeper cavities first. And then I'm gonna just tap it on my surface a couple times. And what that does is it raises any air bubbles away from the surface of the mold so that the outside of the mold is nice and pretty. Now I'm not gonna fill this. What I wanna do is kinda make a coating. And you're not gonna worry too much about it being pretty because you can't see the inside of the mold. All you see is the outside surface. So basically what I'm doing is I'm spreading it to all the pieces of the details. And I'm gonna need to do this two or three times to make sure that I don't have any thin spots. And also that I don't have so much chocolate pooling at the bottom of the mold where it's kind of wasted and too thick versus having the thin spot covered up top. So that's why I wanna make sure that I pop it in the fridge for like maybe you know five or 10 minutes just to firm up before I put my second coat on. So that's good for the first coat. Let me do this, this side real quick. And this doesn't have to be pretty. You can get, it, get a paintbrush and make sure it's exact if you want, but I don't have time for that. So just kind of spread it on there. You make it a little bit more even later. But you do want to just get your first layer on there. So that the sec second coat comes along and then makes it a little bit more even. All right, so that's my first coat. If you have anything that's really messy on the outside, you can go ahead and just kind of wipe that clean. It's gonna be easy enough to come off later, so don't worry too much about that. That's good for the first coat. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge for about five minutes. We'll be right back. Okay, so this just came out of the fridge. It was about five minutes. I'm just gonna go ahead with a second coat of more white chocolate. And I'm using the Sweetwise Melting Wafers. They do melt very, very cleanly, smoothly. So I'm just gonna spread this on top of my first coat and try to notice where there's any thin spots. It's probably gonna be a lot more up on the walls of the cavities than down in the bottom where it, the gravity naturally took it down. So make sure you get up on those walls real well. And you can even hold it up to the light and see, I don't know if you can see through there, if you get up close where there's specific thin spots, you wanna make sure to touch those up for sure. So again, make sure you're getting way up high on the walls. Um, that tends to be some thin spots where some cracks can show through. And then also these kind of extremities, the fins and the, the dorsal fin and the tail fin. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of fill those in. I'm not gonna really leave a cavity there for cake. There's just not enough there that it's really gonna uh, be space for cake there. So go ahead and fill those up pretty good. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this in the fridge for another five minutes. Okay, so the second coat has just come out of the refrigerator and I'm just going to really just touch up a couple of thin spots that I see here. I'm not gonna do another full coat. You don't wanna get it too, too thick. So just a couple places where I see light coming through. I'm just gonna touch up lightly because I've got some chocolate cake that I'm gonna fill this with and I don't want it to show through too much. Okay. So those spots look pretty good. So I'm not gonna bother putting those last few touch-ups in the fridge. I can just go ahead straight away with my cake. I'm just gonna put a glove on because it gets messy. So what I've got in here is I just had like some cake tops that I'd cut off some cakes uh, that I'd left in the freezer for needs like this. And then I just put like a couple of tablespoons of like a chocolate raspberry buttercream that I had. It's really just enough to blend it to where it really sticks real well. So like if you can squeeze it and it holds its shape, 
that's really what you're looking for. It really binds it together so that when you bite into this or cut into this, it's going to really feel more like a slice of cake than um, cake crumbles. So, and, and there's really not a ratio. I know people ask, oh, well, how much do I put in? Well, it depends on how moist your cake is, and it depends on um, how thin your buttercream is as well. So it, it's really just, you start out with less and add more just until it really holds that nice compact shape. So I'm just push it, pushing this into my cavity. I want to stay away from the edge so that these sides can be glued together. And you do want to get a nice compact press in this. Don't leave it loose and crumbly. Also, you don't want to overfill. If you feel like you've overfilled, you might want to take some back out because if this is overfilled and this is overfilled, then when they go together, it's not going to make a complete seal. So make sure you're pressing down as well as you can. It's okay if there's a little uh, white chocolate that's not set there that's going to set inside. And we'll do the other side. And it's okay, like I said, if you have to take a little bit more out. If there's like a little bit of a concave piece there where there's going to end up actually being an air bubble, that's really okay too. Because this has an outer shell that's hard, it's, well, it's not hard, it's white chocolate. It's firm enough that it's not going to cave in. So don't worry about that. So once this is all filled up, I'm going to just make sure that my edges are clean so that I can make a nice tight seal with chocolate, the white chocolate around the edge. So I'm going to pop this back in the fridge again just for like five minutes to help this kind of take shape so that when I turn it out it's not going to um, separate from the white chocolate. So five more minutes in the fridge and we're ready to assemble. Okay, so about five more minutes in the fridge and this is ready to flip out. So what I'm gonna do is before I flip it over, I wanna make sure I'm supporting it so it doesn't just fall out and crack. So I'm gonna turn it over and if you give a little bit of a bump and a push to one side, it should pop, oh, there it goes. And then I'm gonna flip this back over. And what I'm going to do is just set this down for one second. I'm going to fill up my piping bag with a little bit of this melted white chocolate. Got a little parchment cone here ready to go. And what this is going to do is give me really accurate placement of the glue that's going to hold the two sides together. So I'm just going to fold this down. If you're not familiar with how to make a parchment cone, I have another video on that. A quick tip. So I'm just going to cut the very edge of the tip off. And then there's two purposes in this. One is obviously the glue. I'm going to go right along the edge. One is the glue to hold the two sides together. But then any places where it might not be as full as I want it to be, where there might be a seam that shows through the, the cake, um, then I can kind of fill that as well. It's kind of just creating a border inside the mold. And I'm not going to worry too much about what's going to ooze out. There will be some. Just go ahead and count on that because we're going to kind of shave that off and make it look better later. So I'm just going to set this on top. And you have a, about a half a minute or so to kind of wiggle it around and make sure it's lined up real well. And you just want to take a paring knife. And this is not so much about cleaning it up at this point as making sure that the edges are lined up. It just gives you a little bit more of a clean vision to make sure that the pieces are lined up together. And then while it's in here, after you pull some of that excess chocolate away, you can tell if there's any holes. I did a pretty good job here, but if there's any holes that you want to fill in, now's the time that you can do that as well. So we'll give this about, see here's a hole right here above his nose. Fill that in just a little bit. One right above his tail. And then again, kind of take off the excess and push it into those spaces where it was a little bit of a cavity. I'm just gonna give that about a half a minute or a minute or so to, to finish firming up and then we'll be able to take the other side out and we'll have a finished shark. Okay, so the glue or the white chocolate has dried so I can go ahead and unmold this from the cavity. So you can see after I remove it from the mold that there are definite seams and there's actually a couple places where I didn't see where there were some holes. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up those holes a little bit. 
And then I'm going to be able to take my paring knife. There's a couple of things I'm going to be doing with this. I'm actually going to be using this chocolate that's warm to kind of blend in to those holes. So make sure you have clean hands. Um, gloves are great, but clean hands, you can actually the, feel the, the touch of the, the heat and, and use that fingertip to your advantage. So I'm just going to basically rub this into those holes, and then the warmth of my finger is also going to kind of help melt that down a little bit. So then when I go back with my paring knife to remove the excess, it's a little bit easier to do and a little bit cleaner. So I'm just, again, kind of pushing that down into the holes and kind of shaping it with the warmth of my hand to make it a little bit more smooth. And as I'm doing this, because this chocolate that's on here is cold, it's actually firming up the chocolate a little bit more quickly, which I want, because I'm about to go ahead and start with my paring knife. And this is one I use for sugar, so this is not a dirty knife. It just has some, some burnt sugar on there, just clean. So I'm just going to start kind of scraping that off. You can see how it's just kind of peeling off. And it's going to make a smooth seam. All over where there's a seam. Then you can go back and brush off those little shards that you scraped off. But you just want to make the seam as smooth as possible all the way down. And then we're going to put a little finishing touch on there. I'm not going to worry about the bottom. There's a seam down there, but I'm not going to worry about that because it's going to be sitting on the bottom. A little bit more off here so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so then you can just take um, like a little brush or just use your finger and get those excess pieces off. So here's the fun part. I'm going to take a couple of paper towels here just because I don't want to mess up my work surface, but I'm going to give it a little bit of color. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that the eyes stay white. So I'm actually going to cover the eyeball with my fingertip and I'm going to take some of this um, baby blue PME spray and I'm just going to give it, I'm going to spray it here so you can see the color of it and how quickly I'm kind of moving. I'm not like staying in one spot because you're going to get runs like that, especially on the white chocolate, it may repel it. So you want to do quick bursts like that so that it really gives a nice smoothness. So again, I'm just going to cover the eyeball. Now I'm going to give quick bursts and then I'm going to get underneath it a little bit. I don't want to go all the way down because the underneath of the shark tends to be a little bit white. So same on this side, and I'm gonna make sure to get the top too. And a little bit underneath. Back side. And I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna get this color off of my hand. I have a little bit of black fondant here that I have reserved. And I'm just going to Cut that in half. So I have two equal size irises. This is a cartoon shark. It's obviously not a realistic shark. So I realized that a shark's eye is all black, but because he's cartoon, it kind of pops out a little bit more if we have a white background. And this is just clear piping gel. So again, with a white background, I'm just gonna put a little dot of piping gel to make that stick. Black fondant on top. And a little tool here to give it a little press. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Press it a little bit flat, and you're good to go. So I really think this is a great alternative. I have my two sharks here, I'll put them together. I think this is a great alternative to having something that's like a solid Rice Krispie covered in fondant or solid chocolate. I think because it's filled with cake, it's a little bit more fun. You can actually bite into it and it's kind of like a huge cake pop. So try some of the other cavities that are large like this, filling them with cake. I think it's, a, it's just a really fun difference. So for this, happy Shark Week. Thanks for watching.